I'm very happy to be here. Thank you, Carlos, for inviting. It's a big risk because you don't know me personally, and uh, well, he trusted me that I will come and share my experience. And I'm really, I'm, I'm very glad and, uh, and happy, and I will uh, talk uh, about our experience. And I hopefully, I, I think you, you will find something also for you. I come from a very small country, and uh, in size, its population is even smaller than the city of Madrid. So it's uh, almost three million people. Uh, we are Catholics, have the same uh, religion and same, um, same practice. We speak a very diff difficult, very old and very strange language of Lithuanian. No other country can understand us. <laughs> it's good because when you travel, you can talk about other people and you just have no idea. <laughs> and. Um, we have a quite a nice uh, growth, but well, this uh, growth is mainly due to inflation. So this is a bad, bad story, and this inflation is mainly thank you to, thanks to euro. We have it for three years now, and every every year the prices is are rising, especially in services and food. The good thing is that the unemployment is uh, decreasing every year. And well, there is uh, less and less people without without a job. Okay. So this is uh, shortly about the country. It's uh, if you want to visit, it's only three hours by plane with this air flight. So you are welcome to Vilnius. And uh, firstly, I would like to tell uh, how we started. I was raised in, 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 in the same country, but very different country. It was a part of Soviet Union 30 years ago. And what was, uh, how, how was it uh, being a part of a big uh, country, a part of a centralized economy? It meant that all business, we, we were told what to do. Every company had a plan of five years. They knew what to produce, like you can produce the same good for five years. You know the quantity, how many goods you have to produce, and well, you don't need any strategy then. And your supply never meets the demand. So I still remember my mom, she, she could spend two hours uh, near the shop waiting for bananas. Uh, and she was not sure if she will get uh, any, any half a kilo of banana by the time she will get to the cashier. Okay. So it seems right, like a good country, like 0% of unemployment, fixed prices, fixed wages, but actually people were not happy because they could not get the goods they wanted. And even the Pepsi was a product of luxury, not affordable every day. So we had a black market. Uh, if you wanted something from, uh, from other country imported, like made, something made in the States was, was a dream. If you had a Panasonic, it, you, you were like a god. But you had to go to the black market and pay like five times price because it just was not available in the stores. So I remember the, the, the time of the defi deficit that we, we were short of the goods. We had closed borders. I could not easily come to Spain like this. I needed an invitation, a visa, and I would also need a, a formal um, uh, authorization from the government. It's uh, rather, it's totally different now. It's a radical change. And like I found a new report from Manufacturing Risk Index. It says that Lithuania is number two it's so safe like China and Malaysia to, to make a production. So we're between Asian dragons, good for production. We are also proud with skills in uh, IT, foreign language and education. Uh, very good public Wi-Fi. If you decide to come, you, you can check it yourself. Free Wi-Fi everywhere. And uh, now the country is also very popular for, for professional services. Uh, we have uh, big um, offices from Western Union, 
Turkish Airlines and even the Booking.com is opening their European office in Vilnius because we have uh, good, uh, good young uh, people educated and English speaking. I also checked uh, the basketball rating, number six worldwide, but while well, Spain is, you, you beat us, you are number two. So <laughs> there is still some way to go. I don't talk about football because, well, we are number 200 and something. <laughs> It doesn't count. <laughs> so today, is in, 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 in this, under these circumstances, so we have uh, other challenges. And like all the local business, our company, what we see is the downsizing of local market. Uh, since uh, our independence uh, regain, we lost half a million people to other European countries, mainly UK also Norway, Germany, and, and other countries with higher salaries. So people moved out, and uh, this is a, a big issue. And new people, they are not coming in, because the country is too cold and not so, so high, highly paid as Scandinavia, for example. So that means a very fast turnover for employees, there is very low loyalty, people are changing their jobs every, every year or two, and the labor cost increases uh, like 10% every year. So it's uh, very difficult for, for budgeting and for, for price control. And even globally, what we have, we have the same, the same issues like, like you, you, you face, and the Achievers survey showed that um, in the companies worldwide, 61% of our employees even don't know their emissions. 57% they are not motivated by it. 51% are not ha happy at work. And 62% don't feel that they have any impact on their clients and customers. You may say that, well, it's not about us, it's not for you, maybe there are some other companies. But imagine that you have a football team well, I'll take the football because you guys, you are good in football. And well, imagine you have like 15, 11 players and a big budget of few million euros. And then you have a very big problem. This is my football team. <laughs> and well, it means that seven players hardly understand the rules of a game. Six of them wish to be somewhere else, maybe in basketball or ice hockey, I don't know. Each second player hates the game. And finally, we don't care about the fans who have to buy tickets and come and see the show. So, well, I checked also if there is any Barca playing this weekend, but it's a bit or not. We, we cannot uh, see the play here locally. But for, for a manager to, 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 to understand the problem, it's a, it's a it's a big uh, it's a big shock actually. And our company is uh, 27 years old. Uh, for European traditions, it seems like a fresh company. For Lithuania, it's a very old company because it's uh, same old as our new independence. So it was uh, started by scientists of chemistry, a bunch of friends. And what we did, we did the. Mission Impossible. We, we, this, we, we knew how to mix water and oils, and from that it came a face cream. So we started a business of cosmetics. Uh, then we invited their friends and families, and uh, the company was growing, and we faced very big changes and strategic changes. Uh, and I will talk in my, in my presentation later on what we did in 2005 and 2015. So in one sentence, uh, we are the largest cosmetic producer in Baltic region with experience of almost 30 years in developing natural and innovative beauty formulas. So the largest cosmetic producer in Baltics means 65 people in the company, production included. <coughs> the annual turnover is uh, about 10 million euro. So this is more or less like a small company in, in the European scale. And in 2005, uh, the, the owners, the founders of the company, decided to sell their business and go and enjoy their life. 
they were rather senior people and we didn't see a future. We didn't like the new economics, uh, huge promotions, uh, the big competition. They were tired, decided to leave, no kids uh, to, to take over the business. And the young uh, investors just came and, and, and buy the company. And my husband was one uh, between office investors. So he, he found a, a general manager, very young, ambitious guy and also invited me to join the management team. I came as a marketing director in 2005, and we formed a totally new team, <coughs> and we joined in April, and in September, we gathered for a strategic session, and we created our vision and uh, mission. It was done like in the good books of management. We had one sentence for vision, and a few bullet points for mission, and well, it seems like we knew what to do next. And uh, our business goal, our, our business target was to, to grow. Because the f first idea of investors was to grow the business and to sell it after three years. It worked rather well, as you can see. Uh, the average uh, growth, annual growth was uh, 17%, but in 10 years, it becomes five times. So we didn't uh, experience any rise, very, very steep rise growth, but uh, step by step, every year, we did something right. And when the 2013-15, after 10 years, again, some changes, big changes came. Uh, we had the major changes in shareholders because uh, one of the major shareholders decided to leave because uh, we had different view on perspective, what is the company about. We had the change of the manager and the CEO decided to leave because he had his own ideas. What it meant also with management team, some people left, some people were just fired and a new team and uh, one day everyone just asked the question, what's our purpose? What are we doing here in this company? Are we just producing and selling cosmetics? But it's, everyone does that. Unilever, Nivea does that. Why we should work for Bioc Laboratory and not for Nivea local office, for example? And in these days we found Donatas from CERC Consulting, actually, well, I didn't find him on, on, on the street. I found him at university, very good place to find uh, good consultants. He was a lecturer. He gave a lecture about management by missions. I liked the idea. And just uh, I invited him to the company to present this idea. All the team liked him and the, the idea of, of, his, uh, of his philosophy. And we just hired him and said, well, come here, make some strategic session. We are ready to make it differently. So he came in and he gathered all the team, even the shareholders, because uh, our shareholders, they are not very distant from, from us. Well, um, they are local people, on, now only two shareholders, so uh, they are involved in business. So we gathered everyone, all the management team, and we made a session and created our business missions. Uh, this is the translation, but maybe it's not uh, very important to, to understand every, every word and uh, it's uh, because it's about cosmetics and uh, about the small company in Lithuania. But what I want to say is that every word was very important for us. It, it took uh, four days totally. We started from the business model in general what we do, what is our value proposition, and uh, step by step we came to the business missions, and then we wrote them down, everyone was happy, and we agreed about each word in the sentence. We even agreed about the shape of, uh, of this uh, mission, because it's also on purpose, not square, not triangle, it's, um, it's like a honey, may, it's like a cells of a honey, and it's natural, and it's close to our our philosophy of production, and we had four, 
for, for groups like clients, partners, shareholders, and employees. It's rather typical, but we decided it's uh, our main, main groups we have to be uh, talking about. It's easy to see, like, well, you have a strategy, go and do that. Because in the company, even if it's only 65 people, we have uh, like seven or eight tribes in the company. In production, it's very visible. If you visit our, our company, you will see different outfits, different cultures. We even have different work hours. Administration comes from nine, production from seven. There are two shifts. We never meet each other. And if I go and meet my colleague, uh, Miss Ivona, she talks about parabens. And uh, uh, if I meet colleague Ugnus, he talks about Roik and Ebidas, and uh, they have different languages. So I, I have to un understand them. We have to understand each other. Can you guess which one is the finance director? <laughs> Ivona or Ugnus? It's very visible. Even the outfit we say, I am from finance. Watch out. <laughs> I'm very important. <laughs> and, um, well, every tribe, or every department got their homework. So, my, my department, my marketing department, we met uh, at, my, at my house with a cup of tea and a cake, and we did a session internally for our department with two questions. What do we do in this company? What is our job? We just uh, wrote, uh, write down uh, every function. And the next question was how we do it. How? Fast or, or creative? Or all these important words. And production did the same. We, we could select any place like uh, conference rooms, even, even pubs, uh, what, what was good for them. Everyone came back uh, with, with their homeworks. They got the, the posters and they wrote down their own department missions. Of course, what we later did, we, we put all of them together in one, in one place and checked if they match uh, with each other. Maybe some, some department wants to do something on the contrary to the other, it's not possible then. But everyone understood the, the whole missions, the corporate missions, and made their own. To make it working, well, of course, what we also did, the communication plan. As a marketing manager, I was also responsible for internal communication. How to make it visible for employees? And there are some formal ways, of course, the posters, um, like the t-shirts. Well, we put on the, on the back of uh, all employees only a small piece of mission. It's a piece for, for the employees, the mission, employees' mission. They watched it, they, they saw it every day, and they could uh, learn it by heart, but, like after a few months. So just step by step, we didn't make a very huge campaign. We decided to make it very, very slowly, maybe because we are Nordic people, we make things slowly. <laughs> and uh, well, it, uh, it, it was working. And uh, we also implemented in, in our corporate events. So we have annual summer event. It was about missions. Mm. Uh, also new t-shirts and new games uh, to repeat and, and uh, to use the missions in, in company life. Uh, what is also important uh, when you start doing something new, you have to monitor it and, and, and check it and understand is it successful or not? Because the feelings is not enough. Maybe one person feels that it's okay, the other person says, well, it's not okay, it's a total disaster. So we have to agree about the measurement, how we'll measure, and uh, well, this is with key performance indicators. They, they help us in this case. So for example, how, how did we measure globalness? In the mission for our clients, we had a sentence. As I told you before, every word is important, everything counts. And well, like if we have 
if we said that we foster the beauty and health of the people of the world, it was very important for us because we wanted to go from domestic company to exporting company. It's all, it all related with our economics and our uh, country size. As you remember, it's decreasing. So if you want to grow, it's very difficult to grow uh, in the local market. You have to go uh, exports. So how do we measure world? So we measure it by export sales. And uh, in two years, from 8%, it became 29%. So that, that showed that it was successful. And we reached this globalness with, uh, in, with the increasing uh, export sales. For example, in the same mission, we had uh, naturalness and innovations. If you say that you, you want to be naturally an innovative company, well, you have to measure and check it also, because the feelings uh, is not enough. So we, we just uh, thought, what are the right uh, KPIs for, for, for this? Uh, we decided that we need to get the certificates, the international certificates, like uh, local certificates are not enough. We will aim for awards. It seems like, uh, oh, maybe it's not that important, it's not a business goal, but well, everyone agreed that award will somehow say that we are successful. And we also decided to check the sales, how many sales we get from export and from also from natural products, also from innovative products, we are counting them also separately. And we launched new products uh, which have uh, certification from European Union. It's a um, globally known certificate, uh, Cosmos, uh, EcoCert, uh, it's for cosmetics, it's, it's, it's a very high level. And it took us uh, one year and a half and we got international award. This is the silver award from NetExpo, the big event in France. So we got silver award, you can guess Number one was French company, number three was also French company. So the only international company awarded was Bioc Laboratoria for our um, toothpaste, Secodenta. So it was a big event for, for the company, we celebrated it inside. And uh, it's not only for the feelings, but this award we use in every presentation to our potential partners. And while well, we believe that uh, there is a proof that company is doing something right. In 2017, uh, we made, again, we reviewed our business process. I will not, not talk in details because, well, it took us like again two or three days to check again our business model, how it's, everything works, how it's related. Uh, only the management team participated and we did some important shifts again, some changes. Uh, sometimes it seems, well, you can change one word, but it changed all the logic. Because we had a big uh, misunderstandings and miscommunications talking about clients first. Uh, why? Because uh, the sales department thought that their clients are the retailers, the supermarkets. And the marketing people thought that the clients are our consumers, like Mr. John or Miss, uh, Miss Inga, they, they are our clients. And we were fighting and sometimes making, making mistakes. So we saw that uh, we have a, a not common understanding of this term. The same with partners, because the company has many partners, like communication partners, uh, logistics, uh, uh, our suppliers, and it was sometimes, well, what kind of partners are we talking about? So we decided that we have to rewrite, that everyone understands from the first sight, when we read, it's clear. So we change clients to people, because everyone agree that it's people who buy and use our cosmetics. And instead of partners, we narrowed them down to distributors, because uh, our business model, it depends a lot on the distributors. If we don't have a good distribution and sales partner, so that means we are not affordable in the market. 
Well, we don't have a distributor in Spain. That means that you guys, you cannot buy our product because it's not on the shelf. So it's a very, very uh, important uh, part of our, of our chain. So we have a good uh, distributor in Poland. So we are like growing the export in Poland. So we, s we make a very big stress on the distribution and, and new partnerships. Uh, after two years, we also we, we felt we are ready to go even further for the vision. Because when a company grows and it changes and sometimes, well, it's, uh, it's not enough to, to feel what's here, what's next year. So everyone wants, wants to know, is it worth to stay here for five more years or later? So we did some practice with, uh, with the help of Donatas again. Every employee in the company wrote down a title of, of, of a newspaper. How we, f we saw the newspapers will write about our company after two, three years, for example. And everyone wrote the titles and we selected them. We found a few important trends. The people were talking about growth, about exports and a good place to work. So, and after that, we made a one sentence and, uh, and a visual. And uh, this visual is, uh, is um, a true visual for our future factory. We, we are we'll building a, a new place because our vision now is uh, we want to be visible in cosmetic world. And we need new production, la larger, larger production, and uh, more investment in, in, in production and sales. So from all this uh, short story, uh, I picked up some lessons for, in general, what we have learned, what we can uh, say to other companies, what, what I am also universal. So lesson number one is, uh, my suggestion is to include your companies in mission development from the early stage. The more people you involve, the easier it gets then to implement. Even if you see that some marketing people are crucial, or some IT guys, or some engineering, they are not managers, but they are very crucial people in your company, just also ask them to come, because uh, they, they will make it happen in, in, in your business uh, cycles later on. Uh, like uh, when we had in 2017 a strategic session without shareholders, we made a mistake, a small mistake, because we thought that our management team is so strong and so independent, we can do it on our own. We, and when we came with changes, it was very hard to sell it to the shareholders. And well, I thought I have to invite them again for the next time. And then later on, I don't have to sell it so hard. Because if you don't participate, sometimes it's very difficult to, to understand uh, what's all about. Uh, later on, prepare, prepare a detailed communication plan and ma make some fun of it. Uh, the communication plan it's, mm, shouldn't be very formal. There are only the posters, only, only the, some big, uh, big sentences. So maybe in summer events, in some Fridays, uh, celebrate it. Um, sometimes we celebrate our results with cakes and, uh, and well, just some fun because everyone deserves it. And for your business, well, I also advise to monitor and check your strategy with relevant business KPIs because, uh, well, you need to, to, to measure your temperature. Because, well, you have to understand if, if you are maybe sick in, in some place or maybe you are outperforming in other place, you have to also to celebrate it and enjoy good results. And we share the results with all, with all employees and uh, our um, annual bonus is, uh, is related on company EBITDA. So every, every employee in the company knows every month if we are above the EBITDA goal or under it. And if we are under it and under, under the, the goal, every employee can come to, to his manager and ask, why is that? 
Is it sales? Is it our expenses? What is the reason? How can I help you? So it helps to understand that direction if you go the right way. So thank you for attention and uh, I hope you enjoy and have later on also good time here. Thanks for inviting again. It's my pleasure.